Now to a media campaign to stop you from being critical of the voice referendum. Meet Mark Di Stefano, a journalist who was once sacked for spying on a Zoom call and who somehow now works for the Australian Financial Review. He wrote a story a few weeks back calling anyone with strong feelings about the voice a weirdo and a freak. That's what these lefty so-called progressive journalists think about you and legitimate debate. He was angry because here at Sky, we take great pride in debating issues of national significance and will launch a dedicated channel to servicing that debate. Di Stefano doesn't like that. And he wrote, if Sky News does launch a voice channel, it won't be about informing the Australian public. It will be about catering to the millions of freaks and weirdos around the world who suddenly have strong opinions about an Indigenous and consultative body to the Australian Parliament. Now, these two sentences tell us so much about how most Australian journalists see the voice. They think activists should be able to change the constitution without even having a debate. It is a shocking indictment on our industry and a tactic which will not work. The voice is tanking in the polls and people like Di Stefano, who slander Australians as freaks, are partly to blame. The only people I see dividing Australians are unhinged journalists who push their personal politics over objectivity. Sophie, I'm keen to get your thoughts. Uh, it was an interesting article by the AFR. Very strong language. Some of the strongest language I've actually seen from a journalist uh, attacking no voters. What do you make of that tactic? It's, it's very uh, poor form, I think, and it's, it's not a good thing to be attacking people like this, calling them freaks and weirdos. It's just uh, nothing short of a downright insult. I think a journalist should know better than to be speaking about the Australian public, particularly those on the no side, who uh, are not supportive of The Voice. So I think from a journalist, they need to be objective, and this clearly wasn't. And interestingly, the reporter who wrote this, Mark Stefano, hasn't commented... Um, uh, since on this issue about the piece that was written on Sky News. So uh, he's obviously gone to ground over this. Yeah, very interesting. I mean, Nick, it's the Australian Financial Review. It is a paper of, of immense integrity. I'm reading these comments and I felt like I was reading Crikey or, or another unhinged blog. It's strange, isn't it? Well, it doesn't sell many copies, does it? And, and that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's probably because they go around insulting their readers in this way. But I think that, I mean, whatever he intended to do with this very trite and crude attack on, you know, those of us who don't support the voice, he's actually done the opposite. It's like the, it's a Hillary Clinton deplorable moment, isn't it? You know, that's, this mm. is when support for Donald Trump started to build. And, and I think the same on this side. And in any case, they can do all they like. They can shut the no case completely off the entire media and people are not going to vote for these things because in the end, what hasn't occurred is Anthony Albanese hasn't made a, a convincing pub-ready argument for The Voice. And that is why The Voice will fail. It's not because of whatever you do on Sky News, but I'm really pleased to see you have got a voice channel in, in the offing. I think that'll be... A, well, I'll be watching it. <laughs> Thanks, Nick.